Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at a uh, steering wheel puller that Snap-on used to make back in the 1960s. This is a CG630B set. So uh, it goes from uh, early vehicles, which I think is probably in the 30s, up to uh, maybe 1960s, because this was made in 62. This is the, the main application. So there's actually two pullers in here that we're going to take a look at. And uh, so the first part we're looking at right now is the KRA-106. So that's just the case that the kit goes into. You'll see that there's an application listing here. It's uh, not really possible for me to make it legible, but I'm going to include a link to the uh, sales literature for this kit. And it tells you the application of all the different parts, I do believe. I'm actually just perusing through it right now and uh, it doesn't. So I'll have to find a way to provide this information to you guys so you can know what it covers. So I'm just going to go through part by part. I've got some notes that I made for this so I can uh, explain to you what uh, we're looking at. So this is uh, the first part here. This is the main puller. Most of the parts have a, a number on it. So this is the CG60. It actually has got an H in the part for on some of the literature. It's got some casting marks here, but doesn't really explain as to what it is. So this, uh, I really like the way this works. So when you turn the uh, crank on here, you see the shaft comes through, but it doesn't spin. It's actually got a key the whole way. And there's some kind of a mechanism in the casting that obviously uh, makes this possible. So I think that's pretty good actually. So when you're turning that, it's not spinning against your uh, steering shaft and it's not uh, twisting your steering wheel either. So the next part is the uh, the frame nut, so CG60-2. It's just a hundred old hand wheel. Not seeing the part number marked into it, but it, it's pretty obvious as to what it is. So it just goes on like such. And then there's two different forks that go on it. So CG60-2 is the, uh, sorry, that's the frame nut. So the next part is CG60-3, which is the wide fork. So this goes onto the bottom of the uh, steering wheel. It's got some rubber protectors. It's not threaded, it just goes on to here. Like such, and then the, uh, then the old knob there goes onto it. So I'll put these away. I prefer to put this down a little bit. And the narrow fork is a CG60-4. Literature refers to this as a brass piece, but it's not. It's just steel. It's actually fairly sharp. Not sure if they changed that shortly after they uh, developed the product or what. So that's the uh, the main part of like the early style puller. Then the uh, more modern style puller is pretty basic. Eels. Probably be familiar with it. So it's just a four-way puller that they call for modern cars, which were up. I guess in the 60s they started using. This style where there was actually holes drilled in the steering wheel to pull them off. So that's the CG60-R1 is the pressure screw. Then the four-way yoke is the CG60-R2. And then there's two adapters that come with it. it uh, this is a CG60-R3. It has a slot in it. I think they do that so you can, if there's a, a horn wire, you can put it through there if it's in the way so you don't mangle it. 
and then just put it onto here. There's a uh, a ball here. It's been damaged a little bit, but it does a job, I guess. So I guess the intent would be that this doesn't spin. It's not as fancy as the uh, the big one. Then the next part is uh, CG sixty R four, which is a Buick adapter. It's just a a collar, and you just press put it on top of here. So if you're missing that, it's just basically a, a piece of pipe. You could just make that on a lathe. So that goes on there. So I find a home for this in the box somewhere as well. So I'm just going to try to keep all my notes with all the pieces so I know where they uh, came from. There's a little bit of work to put it all together. So uh, the next part we're going to look at is uh, a group of adapters. So there's the CG60M1. That's a 1952 to 1960 Buick and Cadillac adapter. Don't really say how it works. We'll try to get the picture of the uh, instruction chart so you can uh, learn how to do it. For some reason, this there's supposed to be three of these, but uh, as you know, the in pullers, the first thing to break is always like these uh, bolts. So CG60 M2, three times three eight national course uh, Cadillac and Olds is what it's for. The next one is a CG60. N2. So this is for 1953-1960 Rash or Nash Rambler adapter. So it's threaded on both ends. I assume that that fits into the steering wheel somehow. The last piece being a CG 60N3. This will just go on to the this small four-way puller. This is a uh, a pressure point. So I'll put those uh, in with it as I think they're somehow related. Next group are uh, a bunch more adapters. So this is the CG 6011A which is a slotted adapter for and it has a, a slot for wire there's a little pin in here that's just floating and it doesn't come out of the slot. There's nothing really holding it in. It's kind of a, a magical thing. I don't know what that's doing in there. I don't know if it has any purpose or not. Again, it's got a, a hole in it for uh, fitting onto the, I think, the smaller puller. Plop that in there. This is the uh, CG6012-1. This is a large truck adapter. I guess it's for modern large trucks, whatever that might be. So again, I'll plop that in the hole here. And now there's two shock pullers. I'm not really sure how they work because I haven't seen the shocks, but one is the CG60K-1. You see the part on it or not. A lot of them are marked few of them aren't. So this is a Ford shock puller. You have to use your imagination as to how that works. I'm not too sure. And now the CG60K-2 is a Chevy shock puller. Again, it's got a threaded end. I'm sure it's probably for pushing. Cheat sheet notes there. So now, for the most part, everything here is just uh, bolts. So I'll try to get through this quick. So this is like the last, like real fancy part, if you want to call it that. 
This is a CG60C-1 for Chrysler Imperial and DeSotos. Don't really know how it works. Again, you probably have the vehicle. That's why you're watching this video. But I'm not uh, fully up on all of the vehicles. And then now these, again, these are supposed to be parts, but they're just bolts. So there's a CG60C-2. There's two uh, 3 8 national course for Chrysler DeSoto Imperial. I'll put these in the larger holes. Now I'll go for the last uh, group of bolts here. So this is a CG67-4. It's just two 5 16 national fine bolts. Uh, Again, there's a couple of missing and they're twisted and whatnot, but that's kind of expected. Usually things don't work perfectly. And these are the CG67-6, so there's supposed to be three 516 national course for Nash, Rambler, and GMC. These ones are a little bit fancy. I'd like to see the vehicle it goes on. So it's a CG67-7. So there's just uh, three of these, they call them Buick studs. I'm sure that somehow they lock into the, uh, the Buick vehicle. And lastly, so these are uh, CG67-9, so they're two quarter inch national fine. And they're for uh, Studebaker. Then I've got a bunch of random nuts and bolts here. And I'll just show two of them that I thought were kind of interesting. So whoever had this before needed longer bolts and they cut the heads off of some and weld them together to extend them. I thought that was a pretty neat idea. I'd never seen anybody do that before. So I just make a, a pile for the random nuts and bolts. I always like to use like grade eight hardware for pulling. Alright, so I guess uh, that's it for the parts really. So I'm going to take a picture of the uh, instructions, the puller chart, and try to make that as like the, uh, the main page for this kit, I think. So thanks for watching.